So hello again my YouTube lovelies and uh, welcome to another episode in the build series season two. So um, I guess apologies uh, for the wait. Uh, the last episode was uh, quality time which was the one about the sofa and um, that was way back in December now so it's been a little while sorry for the wait if you've been uh, hanging on uh, every breath for for these episodes um, advice don't <laughs> because uh, yeah I'm sort of um, not the most um, disciplined when it comes to churning out um, episodes on a regular basis so anyway wel welcome to this one this is episode 8 the bulk of the problem and now we're on the tail end so hopefully uh, over the next uh, what's it going to be six weeks another six six more episodes and then that will be the end of uh, this uh, particular build season season two so the bulk of the problem this is um, essentially talking about what's behind me the the bulkhead and um, this element of the build was basically the last of the um, structural element that needed building um, in terms of um, uh, structural components that form the the living space of the van now obviously originally here there was a metal bulkhead and many people kind of live with the fact that they've got this bulkhead a lot of people keep it in uh, people take it out um, I had always intended to take my bulkhead out anyway um, Part of that was due to the fact that the shape of the Iveco bulkhead, the original one, it kind of protrudes into the living space slightly. And um, it then gives you this cold metal surface that you would have to clad or do something to at some point. And because the uh, the sort of ethos behind my van build was to keep it stealth as much as possible. Uh, there were going to be no windows put in the sides of the the walls or the door. Although I had intended to put one in the sliding door here, may still do. I don't know. Um, but just with the skylight alone, not having a window to one of the sides of the van kind of created an issue in just in terms of just pure practicality wise in being able to just see what's happening outside without having to open a door so the idea of a bulkhead uh, which was a movable feast so to speak i.e. a sliding door uh, was always uh, something that i'd kind of uh, had planned for right from the outset uh, the, the 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 interesting thing about having a sliding door as well was that when I first bought the van uh, I couldn't open the cargo door from the side um, is that correct or is it the other way around uh, yeah it was broken for a while I couldn't open it uh, so I could only access the, the back of the van uh, by coming in through the back door or coming in through here. So once that bulkhead was out, I was able to just sort of clamber through quite easily and then I could open the door from the inside. This, however, later on was fixed and I was able to open the door from the outside. Although now, as we speak, where are we now? It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. 14th of February uh, 2021 the door handle on the outside is broken and so I cannot get into the van at all from the outside so having this has been an absolute um, necessity so this is my front door so to speak this is how I come in and out of the van <clears throat> the uh, other purpose behind the bulkhead as well as being able to sort of use it as a front door and access the the uh, living space, um, many van builds that you'll see uh, tend to put all of their 
water, electrics, anything sort of business end, so to speak, of the van tends to either be in the garage or somewhere on the side somewhere, but it's normally in a cupboard, either locked underneath uh, the, uh, the sofa or whatever, but it's always in a place where it's probably not the most easily accessible or you certainly have to sort of take things off or take things out in order to access it. And I purposefully left it so that all of the electrics and bits and pieces like that were always going to be at the front, mainly for weight, but mainly uh, just to uh, ease the access to be able to get to the battery and all of the bits and pieces that operate from there. So the bulkhead kind of had to act as a kind of a storage uh, solution as well. So because of that, I basically constructed this box. Now, ideally, um, the box wouldn't be there and I would just be able to walk between the chair, the front seat and the passenger seat and walk through. But due to the nature of how this is and where the handbrake is, you've still got to step over anyway. So my thinking was, as much as it would have been nice to just have a straight walk through, you wouldn't have been able to do that anyway because of the position of the handbrake so you, there's always this step over anyway so to have a physical step over um, that wasn't really much of an issue because I was having to do it anyway so that basically enabled me to have this um, box uh, that I have at the bottom so that created the the, the first part so I made a 2x2 two two, uh, box structure and that gave me enough depth in which I could put a battery and various other bits and pieces in there. And it runs the almost the full width of the van and everything. So that box was basically uh, kind of what kind of almost um, finished and sort of created the sort of the 90 degree corner of the sofa and the front of the van and everything so it basically became the sort of almost like a partition wall. The, the box was created and what I did I kind of continued the the surface of the box with uh, some offcuts that I had of the floor in uh, so that I had a sort of natural step that I could sort of step onto um, and it sort of continued the look of the floor in and then the outside of the box is basically uh, covered I think I did an MDF top and then a ply top to then sort of get it completely level with the flooring and then the whole thing is just boxed in with 5mm um, ply and then I created a panel a removable panel on the front which has just got little kitchen uh, hooks uh, sort of cupboard uh, clasps and then that's how the the front panel comes on i think there's a couple of magnets in there as well and that's just a movable piece that comes away where the battery and the solar charger and battery charger etc etc are all housed in that little unit so the box is complete and um then once I've done that I then start to work on the um, framework for the actual wall and the door. Um, I spent a lot of time sort of thinking bit about how I would create a door. Would it be sort of one wall to the left, one to the right and the centre panel that moved in between? And I deliberated for ages and ages and ages and in the end I just came up with this system of just a one sliding door which slid enough as I can possibly demonstrate for you here and was to give me just enough access between the two seats so the driver's seat and the passenger seat and I was able to step through there. Um, the other thinking behind it was because I knew that this was my only outward facing wall so to speak or window to the world um, I um, realized that the only sort of possible places that I had were really this, this long panel here to be able to look through the gap between the two seats and then a small area over to the right which looks through the back of the uh, passenger seat. So I'm trying to optimize as much as possible two wall spaces but to try and have as much sort of glazed area in there so that I had an area to be able to look out uh, the front window. 
So this is created with a, a two by one framework and I use a, I think it's a, um, a wardrobe slider uh, kit that you can buy. Um, so that's connected with like a runner at the top and then there's a rail at the bottom and that's what the um, door section is connected to and then that's screwed into the box below um, and that creates the runner. Um, that's then clad uh, again with a 5mm um, ply and that pretty much is the, 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 the framework of the, of the bulkhead uh, complete very quickly. It was not um, a long job at all. Another reason why I used 2x1 is because I also intended to have some thickness there so that I could still, if I wanted to, I uh, still haven't to this date, um, but uh, the intention was to be able to put some 25mm uh, Kingspan behind the back and then basically put a vapour barrier so that there was some insulation. Um, never got round to it and to be honest with you I mean there's a slight draft but it's nothing too major um, and it's not really affected me however what that we now two and a half years or more in um, it's not been an issue so I've left it as is but that was the thinking behind making it a two by one thickness or a 25 mil thickness was so that I could put some insulation in there I still could if I wanted to but you know that's um, that's uh, you know something for the future if I plan to so never mind um, part of the frame uh, also uh, goes slightly higher above right up to the top of the ceiling um, which then enabled me to create a small sort of cupboard space so that the over the head of the cab area um, I could use that area for storage so that predominantly is used as a sort of um, a um, a laundry basket really and just sort of odds and sods bags etc for outdoor stuff um, but nonetheless it was a, it and still is a very very useful uh, storage space so it was important to be able to have access and have something that was going to be easily accessible so I created again the sort of sliding door feature across the top there um, that was it really once that's in the next stage was to basically work out how to fill in the the gaps because all I've done is created a big square that sits in the middle but obviously there's huge gaps down the left and the right of the um, the bulkhead so um, I started on the this side the right hand side um, and basically put a template piece of timber in against the wall and marked out the curve of the, the wall, uh, cut that and um, in between this corner here I then mounted a small piece of MDF uh, which is then screwed and that sort of becomes a physical block or barrier between the right hand edge of the bulkhead and then where the wall meets. I was able to then use that as a template for then the next piece so I then do another piece which is made out of uh, nine mil ply. Uh, I then add a small piece to the uh, running edge of it so I create like a box, uh, like a 90 degree box shape that runs up and down and then sort of glued and uh, pinned sort of shelves at various intervals along there. So again the thinking of any space that you have in a van is sort of premium uh, even a big van like this every nook and cranny uh, there is something somewhere where I can put something so I created this space uh, behind me which to be honest with you I don't really put anything on there um, mainly because a lot of times stuff would just fall off but um, I, I guess aesthetically architecturally it looks quite nice and it does give me the option of just storing something and even if I just wanted to put my cup of tea up there or something like that it's, it's something that I can do. Um, once I've done that side I then continued on the um, left hand side or the sort of main entrance area um, and again just sort of through trial and error 
marking with a piece of board and a pen and trying to get the curvature and getting the piece in, cutting it, taking it away, cutting it, putting it back. Trying this number of times until you get it sort of as close as. It's not the most perfect job in the world to be honest with you, but it's sort of close or close enough. So, you know, I'm fairly happy with it. And again, create a 90 degree sort of box area. So then that sort of gives me an area to then screw onto the actual side of the um, bulkhead frame. Um, on this side, it actually comes out a little bit as well. So there's a bit of a gap. Um, mainly, it kind of actually, funny enough, acts as a handle so that uh, the original handle that I had where you could pull yourself into the, um, the, the back of the uh, cabin area here, um, I still have it. It's in the it's in the tool cupboard, but I uh, unbolted that because it was going to be in the way. So this protrusion where it sticks out in the corner is actually gives uh, me a bit of a handhold to be able to pull myself up into the um, into the van, and it also masks all of the controls that I've got there. So like the uh, diesel heater, the little um, battery light controller, the solar. Um, display and the socket for the lights etc all of that is kind of hidden uh, behind all of that so it just sort of looks quite nice um, once that's done um, I sat for for months really with it looking like that um, and then eventually I then start to come up with this idea of this sort of like finishing header piece that I've got above it um, that came much later on down the line um, I'll describe it in this video but it is just really simple again uh, I think some 9mm cut um, in order to be able to sort of bridge the the whole gap uh, from the edge of the wall to the wall uh, where the door is the door's got a very very weird cutout it's this sort of odd sort of curvature shape on the on on the corner and it took me ages and ages to get that profile right but the reason why it's got this very odd curve is because of the um, arm that sticks out from the sliding door um, and it needs that space for it to be able to sort of come in and then slide back onto itself uh, so it has this very odd shape there um, and um, yeah I mean I could have just done a simple straight cut down but I went with the weird shape it's quirky and it, I, I quite like it. Um, once I've created that, um, I then put a small, this is 3.6 mil on the front here, and then embellish that with the circles to sort of carry on with the sort of circular theme, which you'll see sort of l later on in the van, build how it sort of progresses and the, the thinking behind the circles. Um, and that's it really, that, that uh, header piece as well, basically it kind of acts as a sort of an area where I can sort of uh, put the lighting in, run all the LED lighting in there, it looks beautiful when it's all lit up etc. Um, and um, it just kind of uh, finished off that whole area because a lot of times I might be sat with my back to the uh, to the um, bookcase and so when you're looking at this all the time um, it's kind of nice to just sort of have something that looks quite aesthetically pleasing. Uh, what I did do in the uh, lockdown 1.0 funny enough I uh, this used to just have a little uh, piece of fabric that I used to clip on here with bulldog clips but I eventually actually had some insulation left over so I made some insets that clip in so you've got these little metal brackets here uh, top and bottom of the windows so I have two um, insulated um, pictures and I haven't actually done the pictures I intend to actually do some artwork on it or maybe someone will want to do a painting for me who knows um, but the idea is is that they sit on there and because they're insulated that sort of insulates against this plexiglass here um, and again it gives me another wall feature to be able to look at rather than just looking at plexiglass or a curtain I'm actually looking at a wall that's actually got some artwork on so it sort of gave this um, I guess what would be a, a practical uh, wall but a wall that doesn't really sort of um, 
as I know, it doesn't have a huge purpose apart from sort of get, getting in and out. I wanted to sort of make the most of it and make it something that was pleasing to look at. So I came up with the idea of the, the removable pictures and they are my curtains basically uh, at night time so I don't need to hang any softs up in here. Um, that is it for the bulkhead in a nutshell. Um, the next episode uh, we'll talk about, um, I think it's the skylight next. Um, I'll try and knock out the next few episodes, they'll be fairly quick ones because from this point, this bit here is the last of my actual build. Um, everything else from this point is done by other sort of third party com uh, people where or companies um, where I sort of uh, realize my limits limitations and that carpentry is uh, about as far as I go and then when it goes to the other things I'd rather farm that out to other people so everything after this um, goes to other people to do uh, so there'll be some sort of fairly short episodes explaining all of the other bits um, if you've enjoyed this video uh, please uh, give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed uh, please consider subscribing it'd be lovely to have you on board and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode cheers